Good morning, good morning. Brian and Susie here. Churchtown Church of God there. 351 Old Stonehouse Road South, Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. The birds are chirping, flying. You saw that little robin flying around. Lake Churchtown is drying up slowly. The ground is very saturate, saturated. Good morning, everybody. The grass is a foot high. Well, not a foot. But it's so cold. Who wants to mow grass? It's 35 degrees here. We were out walking this morning. I needed uh, two layers and a hoodie and a hat and gloves, and it was craziness. So anyway, we're heading in to turn on the lights this morning, see what trouble we can get into. The fat chicken ladies are over there. Good morning, Ryan. We fed them some salad and some bread yesterday. They were eating real well, weren't they, little Susie girl? Right? Susie's like, oh my. Susie's going to have a visitor this weekend. If you guys remember, my in-laws little chihuahua, she would hang out with me from time to time. And she is coming over because they are taking a little road trip this weekend. So Susie will have some company. We are walking through. I took you down to show you some of the merchandise yesterday. Uh, pretty impressive stuff for our yard sale on the 28th now. <clears throat> I had a person say, I'll see you Saturday. I'm like, well, uh, not this Saturday. Let's go to the 28th. I still have the church cleaning to do. I still have the vacuuming to do. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. A maintenance man's work is never done. But there it is. There's my office, so who can complain about that, right? Right? There's my office, so who can complain about that? And there's my boss, so who can complain about that? You know what I'm saying? All honor and glory to you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you are a submitted follower of Jesus Christ. The world is so good. When you have the perspective that the Holy Spirit places in your heart, in your life, in your mind. You know what? I was thinking yesterday. Because my wife was watching one of those internet Facebook Live jewelry shows. Right? Facebook Live jewelry. They do it really well. The, uh, the lady doing the, the show, the jewelry thing, was really good and very congenial and all of that but they have these processes like if you share the video then you get in a drawing for a piece of jewelry and if they get up to 20 viewers then that then they double it again they put everybody's name in or something of that nature you know and everybody gets excited and stuff so I'll tell you if you share this video and and um, I'll put you in the running for a free Bible as a matter of fact you don't even need to be put in the running for a free Bible because we've got tons of Bibles over here. <laughs> Share the video and you can come in anytime you want. Right, see, isn't that pretty? That's our offering box. Whoops, I got the tripod now. Very pretty. And you can pick up any Bible you want. We have several different translations. So go ahead and do that anyway. That was my attempt at humor. Well, it's not humor this morning. Share the video if you want to. You can share it. You can build this audience. If I win, I'll be in at 2 a.m. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. If you need shelter, you can come here at 2 a.m. That's fine by me. <clears throat> that's fine by me. So, anyway, that's where we're at this morning. I really want you uh, to know I appreciated the conversation yesterday. Got us back on track. Lots to talk about when it comes to the kingdom of God, right? Um, just fascinating things. And then we, you know, I went over to the station and I talked with Jeremy for another three hours. And we recorded our radio program. Um, <laughs> um, brother, if you need shelter, you know, at 2 a.m., this is the place for you to come. Although... Uh, you'll you have to pretty much stay in the sanctuary. All of our couches and all of our comfort uh, furniture down in the basement are just covered right now with yard sale items. 
Um, and so we're really preparing for that. So, What's your preferred Bible translation? I actually use... Probably, I, regularly, I use three. I use the English Standard Version, which is a good um, English translation that they do not meddle with very much. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Another translation, for example, that I use is the New International Version. Good translation, but they continue to meddle with it. Every couple of years, they begin. they change words to the more modern vernacular, and so you could have a, a translation from 97 that, you know, it's not huge, but it looks different than the translation of 2208. You know what I'm saying? The ESV is a Bible that was proclaimed to be an English translation. I forget the year, uh, but they were going to leave it the same for 100 years. And so I use that, I use, and, and, I, and I use that as sort of an English, well, actually, now I'm thinking of another one that I use for English. So there's the ESV. I like that very much. The New American Standard Version. Same concept. American English, they don't meddle with it very often. It stays constant in its language, publication after publication after publication. So the NASV. <clears throat> I preach... Primarily from the two that we have here in the church. And that's primarily one, they're, they're good translations. And two, um, we have them here in the church. And that's the NIV. And I believe the Pew Bible is NIV 84. So they haven't been updated, so to speak, in the new international version um, for many, many years. Because it's quite an expense. So even when I use the NIV, for, I draw from... Uh, online sources like Logos Software, and I'll copy and paste, and they'll have the more updated version of the NIV. The words won't match the Pew Bible. And I'll preach from the New Living Translation, which I like. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, I have other versions that I use. I found um, a very, very interesting translation called the Pure Word which really, really, really seeks, they painstakingly went through the Greek and really, really tried to um, bring out all of the nuances and the layers of the Greek meaning, the meaning of the, of the Koine Greek. And, and that's an, always an interesting thing to do. Um, but those are the four that I normally have out. Those are the four that I normally have out, and I'll be looking. And one of the things that I do, Brian, now this is my sort of vocation, so those are, from my research, those are good translations. Some bits of passages, some word choice are better in some than others, and how do I know that? Because I'll go to my interlinear. I'm not fluent in Greek or Hebrew. Um, and so I go to my interlinear when I'm really looking at a passage. And I'll look. The interlinear has the Greek or the, the, Greek or the Hebrew, uh, the English um, translation that goes with it. And it goes word for word in terms of. And I'll try to examine exactly you know, what, what that word is trying to get at. And now with this version that I, um, translation called the pure word, I can do that as well. Does that make sense? And then I go and I look and I say, okay, what were the translators thinking when they chose this particular phraseology to explain this Greek word? Yeah, I know. It's kind of, it's kind of like, mm, what? Um, because I want to be faithful, I want to be as faithful as I can right now. Brian Warner, little old Brian Warner, non-Bible scholar. I want to be as faithful as I can to the Word of God when I'm preaching the Word of God. And so I, I look at the various translations. When I am intrigued by a particular passage, I go to the pure Word or the interlinear. And then I look and I examine the translations of which I just spoke. And I, and I, and I begin to think through the process. 
And because, uh, you know, that is, that's just sort of how I do it. Um, I just saw George join. Uh, he probably has a methodology as well for, for studying um, and those sorts of things. But that's how I do it. So a couple of people have been. Thank you, Dennis, for that information. The yard sale, the 28th, Jennifer. Yes, it's the 28th. Um, so I'm thinking of trying to get through the yard sale and then making a, a stop over and to to be able to see you guys. Um, oh, that's fine. Feel free. Um, you can bring them last second, last minute. We're here, I think, from 7 to 1 on Saturday. 7 to 1, 7 to 2, something of that nature. 7 to 1, I think. Yard sale, homemade soups, bake sale, uh, hot foods. It's really, really quite a day around here. Quite a day. I'll try to do a little live broadcast um, from, the, from the yard sale. So yes, it's next Saturday. And that there's nothing really wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I have these several translations. Now, you, when I, I mentioned Logos Bible software, um, even the U version, there's Bible Gateway, there's online that you can do comparisons and things of that nature. I just, you know, I'm 52. I like to spread the books out still and read and then have the interlinear and do it the, the best that I can do like that. I, I'm not averse to online or digital um, Bible software, Bible study software, those sorts of things that, you know, either. And, and they can accomplish those sort of side-by-sides that I'm talking about, those sort of side-by-sides they can accomplish very quickly. So there's all kinds of things online as well. So. And I, I just, I love a good-looking Bible. Like this one here, um, this is the, a side by side. I don't know if you can see it. It's a side by side, right? NIV, New King James, New Living Translation, and the Message. Okay, and so it looks. I have it here, and this is a built-in side by side Bible. Four versions, four translations, side by side. And one of the things that I do really like, and I'll put in a good word for, uh, here, give a shout out to the Lexham English Bible. The Holcomb Bible is, is good as well. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's lots of good ones. <clears throat> good, good. And I, I feel that way about the New American Standard Version as well. It's a, it's a very good, shall we say, compromise. And when we say compromise, we're not compromising the infallibility of the word of God, we, we, we compromise on the exposition of the Koine Greek in English. I should bring over, next week I'll bring over that translation called the pure word because it, when you do explode that into English, when you do exposit all of that, it sounds very odd um, in English. It's very, it's, it's strange to the ear, but it does really expose the nuances of how these, the Koine Greek, the words really stand in place of larger concepts, big concepts. And to understand the concept, you understand the context and all of those different things. So it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I'm a total geek in that area. I mean, like I said, I'm a novice Greek. I'm a, a geek. I'm a I'm just a country pastor. I'm not a Bible scholar. So, uh, but I just enjoy doing it. I just, you know, enjoy being in the Word of God, looking. And one of my favorite, two favorite questions that I ask when I'm, when I'm in my translations <clears throat> in the Word. One, I'm reading a, a concept. And of course, all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is good for all of the purposes of the individual and the church to edify, right? <clears throat> so, I'm reading something in scripture, and, and Stacy, you know this because it's a question, the theological question we ask in church. Okay, Holy Spirit, why is this in here? It's one of the basic primary theological questions that you can ask. Why is this in here? All scripture is God-breathed. Not, there's not an idea, there's not a word that's wasted. 
And so whether the concept is, seems to be very straightforward, love one another. Why is this in here, Lord? <laughs> I hate everybody. Well, okay. You gotta, you know, but whether it's, it seems to be very straightforward or whether it's, and they shall not, you know, they shall handle uh, the serpents and not be wounded. You know, those sort of like, okay, why is that in there? I have faith that by the power of Holy Spirit, it's supposed to be there. So whether it's a difficult passage or an easy passage, why is this in here? That's the first theological question that we can ask. And it leads to great places. It leads to fun places when you're studying the word of God. It's a simple question. Lord, why is this in here? Let him take you all over and show you why. Let him open your spiritual eyes and open your heart and your ears and let him show you through the course of your day and days to come why that's in there. But keep yourself open to that question is just a pretty cool thing. Um, the second thing when it comes specifically to translations, and I don't necessarily believe that translations are inspired but I'm hoping that the translator is faithful and submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm saying, why did the translator choose this word? What was the translator or translator-ers thinking when they chose this phrase to represent this word? And that is sort of, shall we say, translation-specific thinking. And I just, that's a question that I ask. Like, I'll look at it, how it reads in the ESV, how it reads in the NLT, how it reads in the NASV. <clears throat> Why did these people choose that phraseology? But those people chose that phraseology. When I look at my interlinear, I see that this word means good or goodness in relation to. So what were they thinking? And that's just another fun thing that my, geek, my geeky stuff does. <clears throat> So, yeah, you want Greek or you want the check out? Hey, you can do. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you're talking about the side by side. They're very, very common. Interlinears are very, very common. Go on Amazon and look for Greek interlinear. Um, or in the pure word. Dennis, I think that I saw that as an advertisement for it that you either reposted or you liked it or something. And I was like, mm, what is this? And I began to look, and it's the real deal. I mean, it's, um, I feel like going over and getting it now. I really enjoy reading it because it sounds very strange to the English ear. Um, but the translators, like I said, painstakingly went over these Greek words and these concepts and broke them out into how it would sound if we used all English words. So, you know, it's, it's very interesting stuff. So you asked me uh, one of my favorite questions, Ryan. That's why Dennis said, don't get him started. I could go on, but I don't want to completely uh, bum everybody out. <clears throat> stop, Dennis, stop. <clears throat> the King James Version, <clears throat> stop. Oh, it's gang. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am such a Greek, <clears throat> geek, <clears throat> geek, Greek. And that's, uh, but I, I've never been much for languages, probably to my detriment right now, right? Doing what I do. My daughter takes to languages like a fish, <laughs> Dennis, like a fish to water. She is uh, all about her Greek and all about her. He, she wants to be a Bible scholar in the original languages, and she it just excels at that. So, God bless her in those endeavors. She's, you know, reads the Greek, the New Testament to me in Greek. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what we're doing. It's Friday morning. I've got a lunch meeting today. That's not so bad, right? A lunch meeting today. I've got to pick up um, Susie's little, is it a cousin? If, if it's her grandmother's child. Oh, I guess it's like her sister-in-law. Yeah. It's her sister-in-law, so she can come and live with us uh, for a few days. And uh, I've got a lot to take care of for the weekend, my brothers and sisters. Lots to take care of. So it's all good, though. It's all good. Anything else on your mind this morning? <clears throat> we talked. 
yesterday in the radio about salvation, about the moment of salvation. Um, and it was just, it's awesome. I love talking about the moment of salvation, right? Um, and we talk, because what we're doing, if you've been listening to the program on WPFG 91.3, <clears throat> uh, we are, we're, we're taking this journey with this hypothetical person from total non-belief, um, like most people in our culture today, knowing what they know of Christians. Hi, Violet. Awesome. Can't wait to see you. Guess what I'm preaching about? Jesus. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, and and it, because lots of people, again, when I stepped into the secular world again, after a you know, decade, I see that people know Jesus Christ. They know about Jesus Christ. Because the name Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of all of their obscenities. The name of Jesus Christ is spoken in our culture today dozens upon dozens of times by most people. And Satan, in his cunning, has made the powerful name of Jesus Christ the centerpiece of profanity today. I don't know... It was shocking to my ear, and I know that I used to be that guy, but it was still shocking to my ear to see how much the name of Jesus Christ is spoken in our culture today. So when a person, they know of Jesus Christ, of course, and they know the stereotypes of Christians. That is what, when we talk about the church, when we talk about discipleship, when we talk about what are we doing here in terms of going into the world and making disciples spread, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, of salvation, of a bigger picture? That's what we're up against. Satan is, is the God of this world is doing his work, man. He's doing his work. So by the time we're speaking the name of Jesus Christ as it is intended, people have heard the name of Jesus Christ hundreds upon hundreds of times associated with profanity, obscenity, and vulgarity. They've heard it associated with disgusting sexual immorality, all of these different things. And so they, they, they hear Jesus, right? And they have all the stereotypes of Christians that Satan will feed them. And so when we say, brother, sister, there's a bigger picture, there's a better way. Right? There is a creator God who created you and wants to know you and be known by you. Let me tell you about him. And he came to earth as Jesus Christ. Oh, don't give me. Boom. The name of Christ just, you talk about triggers, triggers. And it's because embedded now, you know, in our secular world, Jesus Christ is nothing but a profanity. So we, we, that's where we started, right? That's where we started with our journey with this hypothetical person. This is who, this is how he or she has come to understand Christ and Christians. But now, for whatever reason, a church looked attractive or something happened in their lives or there is just a natural curiosity. There was a great success or a great tragedy. Whatever the case may be, they've taken a step toward a body of Christ. So we began to talk about what do they see? What do they hear? What do they learn? And what do they feel? Right? And how is Holy Spirit now working if it is a submitted body of believers? How is Holy Spirit working? How will you... Do you let me ask you this question. When, it, when Holy Spirit begins to work in your life, you've come to a submitted body of believers. You hear the word of God. God, as it says in 2 Corinthians, God is there in that congregation. God is among you. Holy Spirit is among you. And when Holy Spirit begins to work in a non-believer's life, well, how, what do you think that feels like? And here's, here's where we kind of mess up. If we teach that it's sunshine, roses, and unicorns. Because throughout scripture, we clearly understand that Holy Spirit draws 
And then what happens, Dennis? Holy Spirit convicts. There is this place of being very uncomfortable as Holy Spirit turn, begins to turn you and show you your need for salvation. That's the biggest thing we don't want to admit, right, in our lives, that we actually even need saving. When you become to understand the realities of heaven and hell, when you come to begin to understand the realities of sin and holiness and how they clash, and Holy Spirit begins to show you those things in your own life, right? That is why we are drawn into a submitted body of believers. That's why we are meant to be in congregation because not many folks can do that alone without Satan just bashing in there saying, I told you this was going to feel like crap. He's, you know, God, if you want to believe in this God, he just makes you, he's condemning you. He makes you feel like garbage. No, it is a process. Um, I, I shared with you before. It's the five second rule of the truth. If you can stand the five seconds of conviction, not condemnation, conviction, you will be able to experience an eternity in heaven. So, you know, that, that's where we were. We were at that point of conviction. And an individual says, I understand what's happening. I see. Right? The scales are being lifted, all of those different things. I believe in Jesus as the Christ of God, and I submit myself to him. And what happens at that moment? See, I just get excited talking about it, right? What happens at that moment? And, and heaven rejoicing and Holy Spirit indwelling and nothing being the same ever. And that, that rebirth. But you can't experience that rebirth without some pain and discomfort. And it's different for everybody. But Christ is clear. Repent and be saved. Repent and turn to Jesus. Repent. Repent from what? Repent of your sinful ways and sinful nature. And in order to understand that, when we turn to Christ, Holy Spirit does his work. This, this is why you need saved, brother. So anyway, we were there yesterday and we were talking about that and, and that moment and the people who can surround you and and the power, too. We talked about the power of professing that publicly. We talked about the darkness and the light rule of spirituality, right? Satan lives in the darkness. Satan cannot live in the light. You, this can happen by yourself, right? But if you're, if you're still hidden and you're like, yes, this is what I want, but you're in a corner and you're not in the light, you're not with other believers, you're not strengthened and edified by the congregation, you know, you're not professing out loud in the light for all to hear that I am a child of God. I want to be that child of God. Then Satan still says, it's not working. It's not working. You still suck. It's not working. It didn't work. There, you know, this God person, whatever, however he wants you to be, you're not it. You haven't done enough to be saved. You're not good enough to be saved. So get it out there, people. Don't be afraid to walk in the fellowship of believers. Right? Get It's the darkness and the light rule. Satan, you see his grip. Just don't go into the light. Dang it. He can't live there. Satan cannot live there. We learn that from scripture. It's not that he's weaker there. He cannot live in the truth. Because he is the father of lies. He cannot live in the truth. So get out there. Husbands and wives, transparency. It's the darkness and light rule. Get it out there in the light. Don't let Satan speak to you in the dark corner of your heart. In the light. Church, in the light. Get in the light. Get in the light. So anyway, I was excited about that. So... Wow, you guys are either completely asleep, like my brother Dennis, or <clears throat> I've just completely overwhelmed you. And you're like, maybe you're all on your knees right now going, 
Woo! Praise the Lord. I am yours. I don't know. So, somebody tell me what's going on. I'm excited today. It's Friday. I'm bouncing back from getting a little fuzzy headed during conference. Two and a half days. Yesterday, I got all caught up doing this, doing this, doing this, getting ready for the weekend, making PowerPoints, getting the music ready. Today, I'm going to clean. So, very excited. Very excited. Um, anything else for the good of the order this morning? Other than this little cutie right here. This is my bud. This is my girl. That's my therapy dog. Her name is Pastor Susie Warner. The church hired her and she works for treats. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. <clears throat> oh my. Okay, kids. If nobody has anything to say, I would like to pray over you. Again, uh, share the video. Share it. Let's build this community. I have several conversations going at the same time with different folks. Keep asking your questions. Keep growing. You know, the church is the church. It's one conversation at a time. And guess what, people? It happens outside. You see that beautiful stained glass window in front of us? It happens outside that stained glass window. So you go, you go, my brothers and sisters, and you make disciples. You have the conversations. Who cares if they come to the town church of God? You speak of the power of the fellowship. You speak of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Because you know what I'm going to say. We can change the world. One conversation at a time, just like Christ. Works for treats, sounds like my church contract. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis. <laughs> oh, my brother, I'm so glad that uh, everything's working out there for you and Ashley and everybody's doing well. And um, I just love all my pastor friends who check in here with me, my brothers and my sisters who check in now and if you're checking in later in the day, so many different people who do. I appreciate that so much. Like I said, press the button, share it, and we'll make new friends. And that's just the way. That's how I met Ryan. That's how I met Ryan, through a share. I could probably go back through here. And they're like, oh, hey. And then somebody says, hey, I have a question. A few days ago, you talked about this, that, and the other thing. But this is what I always thought. Can you talk to me more about this? Yes, I can. I love that. Yes, I can. I love that. So feel free, feel free, <clears throat> right? That's who, what, oh, that's who we are, that's what we are. Yes, <laughs> you better hope they do. <laughs> you better hope they do, Dennis, <clears throat> or you'll be driving down the mountain and worshiping here at Churchtown with me, which wouldn't be a bad thing. I'd love to have you and your family here. I love you guys, but you might be a little upset about that, so... Um, you better hope that they always, you always got to test the waters. Like, is, and Dennis, isn't every Sunday a little bit different too? Some do, Sundays you can be just how the sense, just the energy of the room, as they say, you know, and, and what everybody brings in and, and can you be sort of a bit energetic and off the wall, goofy, or is that how you're feeling or that sort of thing. So it's, uh, I love, you know, Sunday mornings are just wonderful like that. And, and, um, being able to Engage, Like I said, if you're sitting in a pew and you're not engaged in worship, from start to finish, my brothers and sisters, worship is not a 20-minute period of music. That's just music. We come to church and are bonded by the power of the Holy Spirit to worship. So if you're not engaged in worship, then you're an audience. Don't be an audience in church. And if you feel like an audience in church, try to change that. Make the church better. Get engaged. It could be the church atmosphere. It could be you. But we're meant to be engaged. Now, it's not all out, all people. Some people, when you're coming on Sunday morning, you're fully engaged and you don't say much. But you're there. You need to be there. You need to be surrounded by your brothers and sisters. And you're just, you're with him and you know that you're with them. And sometimes it's all about just being and hugging and I need people, I need people, you know? 
But be engaged in the worship, be engaged in the music, be engaged in the prayer, be engaged in the word, be engaged in the giving, be engaged in the fellowship. Don't be an audience. Don't be an audience. Church isn't for audiences, all right? Sit back and watch what we can do. <clears throat> uh-uh, no way. Come, Holy Spirit. Ooh, yeah. Lead us. You are our pastor. You are our teacher. Lead us. Show us. Reveal to us. Inspire us. We're here. We're all gathered. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. I'll see you all at 10 on Sunday morning. I'm going to preach the word, just like it says in Tim Timothy. We're going to preach the word. Um, so it, it, I'm a little fired up about this sermon. I've been leading up to this sermon and you know, it's just, it's a very basic, very basic sermon. Second Timothy three and four. And the basic question is what in the world are we doing in church? What are we doing? Why are we, why do we play in this, in games like this? Why do we put on a production and a show? Why, what are we doing with gimmicks and programs and titillations and this and that. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be a light in a dying world. Okay, all right, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Father God, thank you so much. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. We pray. Can we selfishly pray, Lord? Raise the temperature up. We want to get outside. I know, I know. It's your world. You'll take care of it. Thank you. I know, I know. But it is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the conversations we're going to have today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your inspiration, for your truth, for the joy and peace and love that surpass all human understanding. The joy in our lives is the joy of our salvation. And that is the good news. That is the message that we have in our hearts whether we're at the dinner table or the supermarket or in our cubicle or driving on the road, that's the message we have in our hearts for the world, one conversation at a time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you in church, right? Go, invest. Amen.